So as an otolaryngologist doing uh, RFA, I think it's a really kind of real intuitive extension of a head and neck uh, surgical and endocrine surgical practice. Uh, you know, we're fluent with ultrasound and imaging in general. Uh, we see these patients all the time. And it's, uh, I think it's, for, I wanted to bring it here to the eye and ear, number one, to partner with radiology, which we uh, work very closely with, but also so that we could expand our repertoire of what we can offer patients um, in terms of different options for management of benign thyroid nodules. Thyroid RFA has a lot of uh, advantages for patients. Uh, number one, it's done under local anesthesia primarily, so patients can avoid a general anesthesia. Um, it avoids a scar because it's a percutaneous procedure. Um, so if they're concerned about the appearance of a scar, this is one option which allows them to avoid a scar. It's very quick, it's easy, it's done on an outpatient basis, and they're in and out the same day, very minimal pain. Um, and uh, generally patients are very satisfied uh, with the outcome. So I think it's a ton of fun to do RFA. Um, I think people will uh, easily gravitate to it. Um, the skill set is otolaryngology, use of ultrasound, uh, facility of ultrasound guided needle biopsy. It's really quite similar to that. In fact, I think most patients tolerate ultrasound guided ablation of nodules better, according to their own reports, than the ultrasound guided needle biopsy that they needed to get to be judged candidates for RFA. That's typically the, the they tolerate it very well. Uh, and it's fun. It's fun to do. It's fun to help patients, to chat with the patient doing this under local anesthesia. And their responses, their response to the treatment is really gratifying. It's nice to see them afterwards and have them happy that they're better. Yeah, I mean, I think that we could expand it out to other indications beyond just benign thyroid nodules. Um, there are places that are using it for, you know, low-grade thyroid cancers, um, for treating, you know, recurrences for patients who aren't good surgical candidates. Um, so yeah, I can. Um, I think we started out with very conservative, um, you know, indications, but uh, as we get more experience um, here and around the world, we're expanding it out to more and more patients who would like to avoid surgeries. I think as we learn more about its efficacy and safety in uh, uh, treatment of malignant nodules, we will see um, more and more adoption of this practice for small, well-selected, uh, tumors, both primary uh, and uh, recurrent. Uh, so I think we're going to see as we move forward uh, that the uh, indications will widen and, and practice will be um, more common um, in centers across the U.S. There, um, you know, there there have been many many trends which have come and gone in thyroid surgery. Um, and I don't think RFA is going to be one of them that disappears. I think it's going to be around for a long time. The reduction in size of the nodules uh, for patients treated for benign nodularity is, is really exciting to be part of. But sometimes you can have even lesser actual ultrasonographically defined shrinkage, and yet the patients really are very happy. Uh, so I may come into the room after RFA, uh, after at the three month or six month interval visit and say, oh, the, the shrinkage was, you know, some lesser degree than what I ideally wanted. And the patient will jump out of the seat and hug me and say, I'm so pleased that the lump in my neck is now gone. So it's interesting. I think surgeons need to be aware that like it's about your ultrasound and your numbers, but not really. It's about the patient's cosmetic and symptomatic improvement. Uh, which can be very gratifying to have. It's also kind of very cool to be able to treat appropriately selected patients with small thyroid cancers or small thyroid cancer recurrences. We know that these cancers are generally, when appropriately selected, are cancers that are of very little risk to the patient. And so they need to know that observation is a very reasonable tool for those types of cancers. But there are, there are some patients that have a decision-making phenotype that leads them to want to have something done, but not something that involves open surgery and an incision. And so in, the, in that subgroup of patients, RFA is really ideal.